Hi gang, Scott here. We're going to run down the Atmosphere AI tool in Luminar AI. This tool adds atmosphere, as you might have guessed, to your photos. Things like fog, mist, a layered fog. I'll show you all these controls that we have for adding some mood and some ambiance to your photos. I'll go through a couple of examples so you can see where it works, how it works, and how it might mix in with photos that you have in your catalog. Really quick, if you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're thinking about adding Luminar AI to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code there that will save you some money. So on to Atmosphere AI. Atmosphere AI is in our creative area. Let's scroll down here, get that open. We have a handful of controls. We can choose the mode, the type of atmosphere. We've got fog, layered fog, mist, haze. I'll go through each one of those and show you how it's a little different. And depending on the photo, one may be better than another. We have an amount slider to say how much of that atmosphere do we want. Depth will control how much uh, reach a particular type of atmosphere has into your photo. And then lightness, you know, how bright or how uh, like darker or dingy is it? So let's start, uh, well, you know, first off, maybe why this photo, Scott, you've got this uh, scene that's already got a fair amount of fog in it. Well, this will be a good scene to illustrate the differences between the different types of atmosphere. You'll see more clearly where it lands on a photo. And actually, I found Atmosphere AI to be quite helpful for accentuating photos that already have a little bit of atmosphere in them. Let's start with fog. So I'll push the amount up and we'll see fog start to increase the uh, kind of the mistiness of the upper part of the photo, right? I'll push this all the way so we can see what's going on, right? The upper part of the photo is really where this fog is being added. It kind of makes sense, right? Fog, think of it as things that are you know higher in the sky above ground. And we can push depth to kind of make that fog creep farther and farther into the photo. It will have a limit, right? I can't get the, the, the a full blown, everything is washed out white. That foreground closer to where I was standing with the camera, that will always have less. And that makes sense because that's how nature is. You know, the closer you are in the fog, you can see a little bit. And as you uh, look farther into the distance, you have more of this diffusion. Lightness how white or how gray is that fog. And I tend to be a fan of the, the brighter look on the fog. It's just, um, I don't know, it's, fog can be pleasing. It can also be depressing if it's really gray. Let's bring that depth back down to a bit here. We'll keep the amount at 100 so we go through the other modes here. Next is layered fog. Now check this one out. Layered fog is really almost like ground layer, right? It's, it's sitting at the the horizon you know there's this line here and it makes sense i got the hills rolling up here but i've got this ground level type of fog this is almost like the the mornings where it's been cold overnight grasses have got some you know frozen or semi-frozen dew on it the day starts to warm up and you get you know steam that'll come rising off of the ground and make this layered fog kind of look and as before, same controls. We have depth to how much we want to push that. You'll notice, again, it pushes into the foreground. Layered fog does not really push up into the, the sky. And we have lightness, you know, how, how gray, how bright. Now let's take a look at mist. Mist is similar to fog. Like if I look at fog and then I look at mist, you can see subtle changes between how each one interacts. Fog, I can kind of see through the trees a little bit more. Mist, it's um, a little less on the trees. And this is where fog and mist are kind of like partners. And one may look better than the other on a photo, just depending on the nature of your photo. The AI in there is identifying you know, trees and horizons and skies and people and houses and all those things there. So trying a couple of different ones, but the same notion where mist kind of comes from the top down, right? It comes from the, the sky down to the ground, control that by depth. We have our lightness for gray versus white mist. And now let's look at haze. Now haze is kind of like a partner pair to layered fog, right? Layered fog, a little tighter to the ground, haze, kind of just that stuff that hangs around in the low atmosphere. And once again, we have depth. You'll notice that haze will creep a little more toward the foreground, but not so much to the sky. 
again, you've got haze and layered fog. It just depends on your photo and which one might look better than the other. So those are the four different modes of Atmosphere AI. Think of them as, as partners. You've got you know, two partners. You've got fog and mist. You've got layered fog and haze. Each one will interact a little bit differently with your photo, but if you're trying to add something to the, the mid-ground, try the layered fog, try the haze, see which one you like better. Control how gray or white it is, and of course, how much. So um, you know, for this photo itself, um, you know, I, I kind of I kind of liked what um, Hayes was doing, although not that strong. Just adding a little more mystery to the the midground, um, and this is before and after those changes. Before and after, not bad. I might actually now I'm looking at it. I might try mist, pushing it farther into the scene, but backing off its amount some to kind of let the natural fog that's in the sky from the scene blend down farther into this one before and after. Yeah, pretty okay. So um, I think I'll, I'll just use that for this photo, but let me show you a couple of other example photos that you can see how this Atmosphere AI interacts differently with different scenes. Now here in this forested scene, I have much less atmosphere that's natural. I do have a very directional light source, right? The light source is coming from the upper left of the photo. And Atmosphere AI understands that. Watch when I push fog. You'll see that fog start to creep in from where the light source is. And I'm not getting very much at all into my foreground here. So this is an example where if you wanted to add some Maybe uh, let's try layered fog and see what that does. Less so, we can see it through the middle there. If I push depth, we'll start to see it show up, right? Not a good fit for this photo, right? This this one, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't feel right. Uh, it, it just, it, it feels it feels artificial. It, you know, I'm forcing something to happen. Mist, you know, maybe that's a better fit if I wanted to have a, a, a misty feel. But my key point here with showing you this example is that the AI understands where your light sources are and the atmosphere AI reacts accordingly, right? Where I have more light trying to push through fog, well, that's what's going to reflect off the little water particulates and so forth and create that gray blanket that we get with the fog there. So you, you will see you know, this, this directionality with Atmosphere AI. Here is another example where Atmosphere AI can enhance what you already have. There's a lot of you know, haze and particulates through the midground. This is a great place to use either layered fog or haze to amplify that. So layered fog, you know, I'll push this farther up, maybe haze. Haze is a little bit of a stronger look and I actually kind of like it. We have depth, let's push that farther. And you see now depth gets a little bit aggressive, right? Um, let's switch back and take a look at layered with more depth. Nope, I like I like the haze. It's it's a haze is, is catching me uh, farther out here into the midground. But one other thing we have with all of our tools, uh, or at least most of them, <laughs> almost all of them in Luminar AI is masking. So as I'm working this depth slider, you know, it's creeping into this uh, this ridge line in the foreground. I don't want it there. Well, I'll just grab my mask and erase. Right? I get the mask here, paint mask, erase, uh, softness. We can bring the softness down a little bit. I can bring my size down some, and then just sweep through here. I get the red overlay, and I'll just kind of get close to that edge there. Maybe one more time for this ridge here. You know, the red is showing me where the the haze and the atmosphere eye will remain applied, and then the rest of it is where it won't. And so I'll just make sure to go along the boundary that I have, because I'm not going to push the depth of my haze past my mask line. We can see my mask line now, right? And so I'll make sure not to do that, and just add that little extra bit before and after a really nice accent in the midground, and letting those layers of hills, you know, kind of um, those become those those subtle little curves become the star of the show there. 
here's one more example and this is a case uh, to show you that you can't force atmosphere into every photo it's not always going to work and, and that's okay it's, it's a tool it doesn't work for everything but I've got this scene here where you know I could envision a day where it is foggier and there's just more mistiness on the ocean so can I make that happen here if I start pushing fog up and pushing the depth in you know not really it's it's not it's it's getting very hazy and I'm losing you know these this is a wide angle photo and these foreground rocks I'm not very far from these a couple of feet maybe three and so this this isn't working um, if I try to do it with mist I get a little bit of a different interaction but it's the same kind of story it's uh, it's just not quite working out interesting thing about here layered fog and haze check this out I do layered fog here that's not, it's like, oh, I would love to have that fog kind of weave through the midground. Wouldn't that be cool? That's not where it lands. It lands in the foreground. The AI is going, well, um, you know, in this scene, what I see here, uh, this stuff here is pretty far off or whatever it does. It just does not decide this is where I'm going to put that, uh, that haze. And I don't have any controls to move it around, right? So, you know, in this case where I would love to be able to say, you know, here's fog. And I would love that fog to be kind of in and around through just the midground and maybe some of the background. Um, what I'd really like to have at this stage right here, I'd like to have a luminosity mask, be able to take the darker parts, you know, those darker parts of those darker facing rocks and have those downplayed, you know, be able to go in here and just say luminosity, but we do not have that option in Luminar AI, I'd have to take this back into some other tool. And even then, I'm kind of forcing it. So uh, my, my point is, Atmosphere AI is very cool. You can do some interesting things with it. You can certainly accent photos that already have some level of atmospherics. You saw several examples of that here. The layered fog or the haze has some interesting possibilities. I could also see it working for uh, you know scenes that are outdoors that you have a strong foreground subject and then this kind of you know mist that goes roughly ground level behind your main subject that's it's cool stuff but it doesn't work for everything don't try to jam it into a photo where it's just if it's just not happening it's just not happening but that's how atmosphere ai works those are its controls controls are simple you got three controls you choose your different type of atmosphere adjust them to get uh, the look that you're looking for hope you found the video useful got questions go ahead and drop them below and until next time my name is scott davenport have fun